everyone. I'm Ashley, the Nutrition Educator for Nourishing Generations. Thanks for joining our class today. I'm here with our Chef Skylar. How's it going, Chef Sky? Hi, everyone. I'm Chef Sky. I'm really happy to be here with you today. It's going wonderful, Ashley. So, Chef Sky, I'm really excited about our recipe today because we're going to be talking about all five food groups. But before we get cooking today, let's make sure we wash our hands good. So everyone head over to the sink and wash those hands for 20 seconds. Anytime we're in the kitchen, we wanna make sure we wash our hands really well. But especially now, since we're dealing with COVID-19, washing our hands every day and often is really important. So make sure you wash and scrub for 20 seconds. Today, we're gonna to be chefs making veggie pizza. I love making veggie pizza because well, I've been a pizza chef all my life. I love working with dough. It's a delicious food that everybody loves. And if you use healthy ingredients, pizza can actually be quite healthy for you. So today we're gonna to focus on making pizza with healthy ingredients. We're gonna to get to work with dough and we're gonna even learn how to chop some veggies with knives properly. So I'm really excited to get going. Wow, Chef Sky, I love pizza and I'm sure the kids out there love pizza too. But what I love about this recipe, especially for veggie pizza, is that it has all five of the food groups we're gonna talk about today and learn more about all five and what they do for us. Why do we wanna make sure we're eating a variety of foods from all five food groups? Well, that's because it makes us stronger, it gives us energy, and it makes sure our brains are working well because we're getting nutrients from all these sources. So can anyone out there name one of the five food groups? Let's go over these five food groups together. We have whole grains, fat, protein, fruits, and vegetables. And then once we have all five, there's a special sixth group, water. We wanna make sure we drink plenty of water to wash all that down. Okay, Chef Sky. well, I'm excited. I think the kids are too. We're ready to cook. One of the first and most important things when we're cooking any recipe is to get all of our ingredients and equipment together. There's a French term in the cooking world for this. It's called mise en place. Now you don't have to remember that word, but what it means is everything in its place. And that's the idea behind it, is that if we have everything ready to go before we start cooking, it makes the cooking process much smoother. So today, we don't have very much equipment we need, but let's make sure we've all got it. We're all gonna need a cutting board. Yours might not be a big wooden one like mine. Any cutting board's fine. You're gonna need a knife. Mine is a big chef's knife. You might have a little knife at home. Any knife will be fine for this, whatever you feel comfortable using. You're gonna need a cheese grater. Any kind of cheese grater will do. This is a big box grater, but we're gonna show you how to safely use it a little bit later on. And you'll need a pan, a cookie sheet, to cook your pizza on. The main piece of equipment when you are cooking pizza is your hands. Now, we will also need a little spoon later just to put the sauce onto the pizza, so maybe grab yourself a little spoon as well. Another part of mise en place is making sure that our oven is ready to go. If we're gonna be cooking anything in the oven, baking it, then we need to make sure to preheat our oven beforehand. You don't wanna put a pizza or any baked good into a cold oven. You wanna have it already completely hot at the temperature you want it before you put it in. So we are gonna preheat our oven to 450 degrees. Once we've done that, we're ready to continue. Ingredients wise, we have more things to deal with today. So in, in pizza, the first thing we start with is our dough. Now we may have gone to the store and bought some dough or we may have made our dough at home. Here I have some that I've purchased a bit of pizza dough. So we're gonna need our dough. Try to look for pizza dough made with whole wheat flour, or if you're making it at home, use whole wheat flour instead of traditional white flour. Whole wheat flour is an amazing alternative that adds a ton more nutrition to our food and tastes absolutely delicious. So try using whole wheat pizza dough next time you make your pizzas at home. With the dough, we're gonna need flour to work with the dough. So I've got a bowl of flour here ready to go. We're gonna need our sauce. Any sort of uh, tomato sauce will do, but usually with pizza, you go for ones that have less flavoring. So not the roasted garlic pizza sauce, but just the, um, just the basic tomato sauce. 
and then we go with whatever veggies we want on our pizza as well. Now, of course, we're going to need mozzarella cheese, so I've got a block of that ready to go. But what veggies are we working with? Well, today I've got a red bell pepper, I've got an onion, I've got some mushrooms, I've got some black olives, and then I've got spinach and some fresh herbs, basil and oregano. Fresh herbs are great on pizza, and the basil is going to go on the end after we cook the pizza. So if we've got all our equipment together, we've got our pizza sauce, we've got our flour, and we've got all our veggies ready to go, then we're ready to start cooking. Today, our first food group is going to be whole grains. There's lots and lots of flour in the pizza dough. Wow, Chef Sky, I can't wait to make this yummy pizza crust. But first, let's talk a little bit about whole grains. Whole grains include things like wheat, rice, corn, millet, barley, and my personal favorite, quinoa. We want to try to eat as many whole grains as possible because these give us long, sustained energy, helps build muscles, and keeps us smart as well. Whole grains are full of wonderful nutrients like fiber, protein, vitamins, and even some trace minerals. There's lots of different things we can make from whole grains, including tortillas and bread, pasta, and even some pizza crust. Now we wanna to try to avoid what we call refined grains. This is when they take the whole grain and they pull some things out of it, mostly nutrients like fibers and protein, and turn it into a white flour, which is often used for cakes and cookies and sweets. While this increases the shelf life of these flours, it's depleted it of many of the wonderful nutrients that our body needs. So we wanna to try to eat this sparingly and really focus on whole grains instead. So we're probably gonna start with dough looking something like this. And we need to turn this into a pizza. So we start with a generous amount of flour. Put some flour down on your counter. This is where you're gonna want a nice big surface. It's probably gonna get dirty, so just be prepared to clean up later. That's part of the fun of it. Don't hold back. We can use plenty of flour in this part. We wanna coat the dough with it a lot, okay? We start around the outside, and this is called pounding the dough. Basically, you're pushing your fingers through the dough trying to spread it. And that's the key to remember, is you're trying to push through the dough. If you're just pushing on the dough like this, it comes right back. But watch now, when you push all the way through to the table, you're really getting it to spread. Leave a little bit at the edge so you have a crust, right? Remember? But keep on spreading it, pushing through like this. Opening up the pizza dough. You might get some bubbles on the edge, like there. Those will be delicious if you like bubbles in your crust. If not, you can pop them just like that. Once it's opened a little bit, this is where I like to pick the pizza dough up and let gravity do a little bit of the work for me. Stretching it over my knuckles like this. It's gonna get nice and thin. It's gonna get nice and big. Look how far we're stretching that pizza dough. And your knuckles will tell you if you can feel the dough getting too thin, that's when you move to a new spot and start stretching somewhere else. I've always said that pizza dough speaks to you, but the way that you hear pizza dough is not with your ears, it's with your hands. So listen to the dough, get it to a nice thin, pizza crust like that. And then we're gonna put that crust right onto our cooking sheet. And that is where we're gonna cook our pizza. So one of the reasons whole grains are so important is because they give us long sustained energy from the complex carbohydrates. This is a way to light our fire and make sure our body has enough energy to do all the things we love to do, like run, ride our bikes, or play soccer. Refined grains don't have this slow burning energy and tend to give us a sugar high and then a sugar crash. That's one reason to avoid them. The first ingredients we're gonna be adding to our pizza are sauce and cheese. 
Now, you may have cheese that you already bought at the store that's shredded in a bag, but sometimes you have a block of cheese that looks like this, and that's when we need to use our shredder to shred our cheese. And there's a few things to keep in mind to stay safe when using a shredder. The most important thing is to try to leave as much space between your fingers and the shredder as possible. The most important parts to watch out for are your fingernails and your knuckles because those are the parts that will get hurt the most if they get caught in here. So treat a shredder like a sharp object and be careful just like you are with a knife. You hold the shredder with your, with your right hand if you're right handed or your left hand if you're left handed. In your other hand you take the cheese and you just do nice long slow motions from the top of the shredder down. And you want to leave nice, good amount of space between your hand and the shredder as much as possible, okay? You can even switch hands if that's better for you. Doesn't matter, whatever feels better for you, okay? But see how I'm moving my hand back as the cheese gets smaller to create more space between my, my knuckles and my fingers and the shredder, okay? So just go nice and slow and be careful here. And we're going to shred our entire block of cheese. Now when it gets small like this, and there's a little bit left, sometimes turning it sideways creates a little bit more space and makes it a little bit safer. So let's all finish up grating our whole block of cheese, what we've got there. When it gets down to the end like this, this is when you have to be really careful, and sometimes if you have just a little bit left, like this, you just have to put that bit aside and you can maybe eat that piece if you want. But, as you can see, we've got a nice pile of cheese ready to go on our pizza. After we have our cheese grated, we're ready to put our sauce and our cheese on our pizza. Let's pull out our pizzas that we made before. Our doughs should be nice and ready to go like this. I've got a bowl of sauce here and I've got a spoon. Now you don't want to put too much sauce onto your pizza because then it comes out soggy. So a nice thin layer spread almost to the edge just like this and that is going to be plenty of sauce right there. If we do more than that, it's not going to come out crispy. After we have our sauce on and it looks like this, a little crust around the edge, we're going to go back to our cheese and we're going to spread it nice and evenly across the top. Now some people like a lot of cheese on their pizza, some people don't like as much cheese on their pizza. I don't think that you can go wrong with too much cheese, but the way that mine looks right here, this is a really good amount of cheese. If you do a lot more than this, your pizza is going to be really heavy. And if you do much less than this, the sauce might burn. So shoot for a nice thin even layer like I've got here. If you really like cheese, you can put a little bit more, but try to make it look as similar to this as you can. And then the next step is going to be getting our toppings on. Wow, Chef Sky, that looks so delicious. I love cheese. And one special thing about cheese is it's part of two food groups. Yep, cheese has both protein and fat. Protein is really important. It helps us build healthy muscles and strong bones. It's a building block for the body that's gonna help you grow and develop, especially when you're younger. Protein can come from both plants and animals. Did you know that? What are some of your favorite protein foods? Protein can come from eggs, fish, meats like turkey and chicken or beef, milk and yogurt and cheese, also tofu, beans, and peanut butter. Now that cheese is also part of our fat food group. Healthy fats are important. It helps keep our brain working so we stay nice and focused in school. It protects our organs. It's part of our cells. And fat also makes us feel full and satisfied so we don't eat too much food. 
eating plenty of healthy fat is part of a well-balanced diet. These healthy fats can come from foods like nuts and seeds, olives and olive oil, coconut or coconut oil, and it also is found in meats, eggs, and cheese. When you're choosing your fats, make sure you're getting them from whole food sources as much as possible and try to avoid bad fats, which include trans fats and hydrogenated oils. These are often used in fried foods like French fries at a fast food restaurant or found in a lot of processed foods in order to give it a longer shelf life. But instead, we want to choose more of these natural healthy fats. So make sure you're reading your labels and picking the fats that are best for you. The next thing we're going to do is put our toppings on our pizza. This is going to be a ton of veggies and we're going to get to work with knives and learn how to cut the veggies properly. So I'm going to show you some safety techniques with knives now and then we're going to get to practice what we've learned on chopping some veggies. Yay, I'm so excited to add all these yummy vegetables to our pizza. I love the veggie food group. Vegetables are so important because they're full of healthy nutrients like minerals, fiber, vitamins, as well as some water as well to keep us hydrated. Vegetables are also great because they help all the other nutrients like fat and protein work better in the body because they're full of cofactors. A lot of the nutrients in the body work together in order to make us healthy. Did you know there are several different kinds of vegetables? There's leafy vegetables like spinach and collard greens and kale, crunchy vegetables like broccoli and cauliflower, and root vegetables like carrots, potatoes, and beets. When we're working with knives, there are a few safety things to keep in mind that if we practice these techniques, we will be safe when we're using the knives. The first thing is when you're not using a knife, it stays face down on your cutting board like this. There's no reason to be walking around with a knife or to be touching it when we're not ready to use it. Once we're ready to chop our vegetables, we need to think about what we're doing with each of our hands. So, with our left hand, what do we do? Well, we get a vegetable. Today, I'm gonna start with, oh, a mushroom. And with our left hand, we make the shape of a claw like this, with our fingers inwards. We use that claw to hold our vegetable in place. What you might want to do is keep your fingers out like this to hold the vegetable, which is a little easier to hold, but when you come in with your knife, you can hit your fingers. If you have that claw, your knuckles will guide the knife and you won't chop your fingertips. Now that we know what to do with our left hand, what do we do with our right hand? This is the, the hand that we hold the knife with. To pick up the knife, you start by putting one finger right here on the base of the knife. Then your thumb grabs the other side, so you're pinching it like this. These three fingers come around the handle like this, and that's how you hold the knife. If we do that with our right hand, and with our left hand, we keep our claw we will be very safe when using the knife. Now there's one last thing before we get started, and that is when you're chopping a vegetable, you always want to have a flat surface to chop on. So you see I removed that bit of the mushroom so it's flat. If I have a bell pepper and it's rolling around, I would want to chop that in half so it's flat, you see? And then when we cut, we push away from ourselves, just like this, slicing through the vegetable. So remember those things. Your left hand is a claw. Remember how to hold the knife with your right hand. Flat surface to cut on. And the fourth thing, pushing away from yourself. If you keep those four rules in mind while you're cutting veggies, you'll be very safe. So now that we've learned a bit about knife safety, Let's practice on some of these vegetables here, shall we? Let's start by finishing up this mushroom. You see how I keep my left hand in the shape of a claw, and I use that hand technique to hold the knife with my right hand. Pushing through the veggie away from myself, it's very easy to make nice, thin slices while my knuckles protect my fingers. Look at that, that's a beautifully chopped mushroom. Why don't you go ahead and try and chop a mushroom now? 
If you don't like mushrooms, that's okay. We don't have to put that on our pizza. We want to put on things we like. Me, I really like red onions on my pizza. So I've got a bit of red onion here. I'm going to do the same thing. Do you see how I have half an onion? I chopped it in half so it would be a flat surface so it doesn't roll around like a whole big round onion does. Look at my claw on my left hand. Pushing away from myself, I'm able to make nice thin slices of red onion. I don't want too much onion on my pizza, so that's going to be enough for me right there. When we're chopping olives, the main thing to remember is that they are round. So, just like an onion or a pepper, we're going to cut it in half first. I'm going to pinch it between my fingers like this, put my knife right over the top like that, and cut it in half. Now we've got a nice flat surface to cut on, and our olive won't roll around while we're trying to cut it. See? After you've done that, all you've got to do is remember your claw and remember how to hold your knife, pushing away from yourself. It's very easy to cut the olive into nice little pieces like this. If you want a challenge, you can try doing two at once like I'm doing here. And we've got a beautifully chopped olive. The other veggie that I'm going to put onto my pizza today is red bell pepper. Earlier we cut the pepper in half so we have a nice flat surface. But peppers are still kind of weird to cut. So what I like to do with a pepper is cut it into smaller pieces first. It's still round, but you see this allows us to create many flat surfaces. And you can kind of push it down and kind of make it flat. You see? Like that. We're not going to use that much bell pepper. So push it down, make it nice and flat, and remember to push away from yourself. Just like this. Just like we did with the other veggies. But this one you have to go slow and be extra careful because the skin is thick. So it's easy for the knife to slip. If you're not careful, your knife can slip like this. But if you're careful and you go nice and slow and push away from yourself, the knife will go right through. And then you've got some nice little pieces like that that you can put on your pizza if you want. My spinach is right here, but I don't think I'm going to chop my spinach. That's going to go on just as it is. Now that I'm done with my knife, I'm going to put it down on the cutting board because I don't need it anymore. But we've still got oregano and basil here. Let's make a little room on our cutting board. When you're working with fresh herbs, you want to take them off of the stem. You see there's leaves and the stem. It's very easy to remove it from the stem. You just grab it and pull the leaves off like that and it comes off nice and easy. Let's go ahead and take our leaves off of our stems right now for the fresh herbs that we're using. The same thing with the basil. The basil leaves are much bigger, so it's even easier to remove those from the stem. Look at that, beautiful fresh herbs. These can be torn up with just our fingertips. We don't need our knife at all for this part. Let's just use our fingers like this and tear up our fresh veggies, our fresh herbs. Now the basil is going to go on the pizza later, so I'm going to keep it separate because I don't want to cook the basil. Nice big pieces of basil. Beautiful. Now we are ready to put our veggies onto our pizza. But wait, Chef Sky, this recipe is supposed to have five food groups. The last food group is fruit. Are we putting pineapple on our pizza? I don't see any. Well, actually, Ashley, believe it or not, there are multiple fruits on this pizza. Olives are special because they are a vegetable and also a fruit because they contain a pit. So technically, while we think of them as vegetables, they're actually part of the fruit family. Not to mention, olives also contain healthy fats, like we learned about earlier. So olives are both a fruit and a healthy fat. That's where olive oil comes from. Also, we have tomato sauce. And tomatoes, even though we think of them as vegetables, are actually fruits as well. So we've got olives on our pizza, and we've got tomatoes on our pizza. And no, it's not pineapple, but those are members of the fruit family. Oh wow, so we do have fruit on our pizza. As I mentioned, fruit is the fifth food group. And I bet this is your favorite food group out there too if you're like me and you love fruit. 
Fruits are naturally sweet, so they're high in carbohydrates that give us lots of energy and quick energy when we need it. They also give us plant super nutrients like vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants. These are known to fight disease and keep us healthy. They are also full of fiber for healthy tummies and water, which will keep us hydrated. Now, can you name some of your favorite fruits? I think my favorite fruit is either bananas or maybe strawberries, but other fruits include oranges, kiwis, apples, and some sneaky fruits out there like tomatoes and cucumbers are also technically a fruit. So a fun fact, how do you know the difference between a fruit and a vegetable? Fruits will contain seeds, like you think of a strawberry with the little seeds on the outside or oranges with the seeds inside. Vegetables won't have seeds because they consist of roots, stems, and leaves. So that's how you know the difference. When we're topping our pizza, it's important to put the veggies on in the right order because some of them will burn if they're on top. So let's pull out our doughs that we made earlier. Now they've got the sauce and cheese on them and this should look like this. We're going to start with the oregano, the other herb that we used earlier. The basil is going to go on after it cooks, but the oregano should go right now on top of the cheese. Just a little bit like that is plenty. The next ingredient we want to add is our mushrooms. Mushrooms have a lot of moisture in them, so you don't want too many on your pizza. Otherwise, it can get kind of wet. So I'm just going to put a few around the edge like that. Next, I'm going to put my onions. I like a lot of onions, so I'm going to put them all over the pizza. We've got our olives. We're going to put some of those on our pizza as well. And then the spinach is going to go on top because if it's not on top, it gets very, very wet. Spinach cooks down, so I'm going to put quite a bit of it like this. And that pizza is looking like it is ready to go into the oven. Okay, chefs, so now that the pizza's in the oven, let's get up and get moving. Let's see what Holly has in store for us this week for a fun fitness activity. Hi, kids. I'm Holly Caliero. I'm the physical activity educator here at Nourishing Generations, and today you're going to learn about why physical activity is good for you and your immune system. I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Who's It, What's It thingamajig to teach you all a little bit about movement, circulation, and your lymph system. <coughs> Hello, children. I'm Dr. Wendell Who's It, What's It thingamajig, and today I will be talking to you a little bit about why exercising is important to your health. As you know from your nutritionist today, eating lots of fruits and vegetables is very important for keeping our bodies healthy and fighting viruses. But did you know that exercising is equally important? One of the main ways that exercising is good for our bodies is that it keeps our hearts healthy. Now, children, many of you probably know that you have a heart, but you may not know all that it does for you. Your heart is a pump. It pumps blood filled with oxygen from your lungs to all areas of your body. Your blood also carries all the nutrients from the healthy foods you eat and the water you drink to all of your cells throughout your body. It is very important to keep your pump strong and healthy. This will boost your immune system, help you to have energy, and help you to feel good all of the time. Another way that exercise is beneficial for your body is that it is good for your lymphatic system. Now children, I bet most of you have never even heard of this system. 
your lymph system is essentially your body's drainage system. While your heart pumps your circulatory system, your lymph system has no pump and relies entirely upon the movement of your body to keep it flowing. If you think of your circulatory system like the tap to your sink, the lymph is like the drain. And as you know, it's very important to keep your drain from getting blocked up. We all know what that's like when the kitchen sink gets backed up. I mean, let's be real here. So it's very important to keep this, this system functioning and flowing properly. And one of the main ways to keep this system healthy and functioning properly is lots of physical movement. Other ways to benefit your lymph system are to drink lots and lots of water and to eat red foods such as cherries, strawberries, pomegranates, watermelons, beets, red bell peppers, raspberries, and raspberries. Don't forget raspberries, children. Uh, red foods are especially beneficial for the lymph system. So remember, children. What are we remembering? Oh yes, so remember, children, in addition to eating a diet filled with rainbow fruits and vegetables, it is very important, it is extremely important to the health of your body to get lots of exercise to keep your heart strong and your lymph system flowing. Thank you. Hey kids, are you ready for some totally awesome 80s aerobics? I know I sure am. Now, I'm sure you've noticed that I'm not wearing any spandex. Well, unfortunately, my leotard happens to be at the dry cleaners, but I did come prepared wearing my sweatbands because we are gonna work it. Let's go ahead and get started. Let's have you start out by marching. Now, while we're doing aerobics, one of the most important things is to keep moving the whole time, keep your heart rate up and your muscles moving, okay, and building. So, if it takes you a few minutes, to catch on to the movement we're doing, just march, march, march while you're doing it. Okay, so let's have you go ahead and move your feet apart, bend your knees, and we're gonna breathe in and up, and out and down. Breathe in, and out, and in, and out. All right, walk it out. Okay, so. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna do a slide from side to side with some jazz hands like this. Slide, 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 slide. Now join me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. All right, march it out. Good job. Okay, then next we are gonna do some hops from side to side with our knee up and our hands raised. We're gonna do opposite knees on each side, okay? Hop, hop, up, hop, hop, up, hop, hop, up, hop, hop, up. Okay. One, two, three, four, work it. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay, march it out. Okay, good job. Okay, our next move is gonna be. Um, we're gonna raise our knee and do some bicep curls, alternating sides, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, work it, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Okay, lock it out, good job, guys. Next, we're gonna do some side lunges and punch our arm down at the same time, okay? Just like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. Good job. Okay, march it out, march it out. We're gonna move on to windmills. So you're gonna raise your hands up 
to your head. And then you're gonna pull up your opposite knee and do your best to touch your opposite toe. It's okay if it doesn't touch, just remember to pull with your lower abs and not with your shoulders, okay? All right, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Okay, good job, walk it out. Okay, so we're gonna slow it down a little. We're gonna do some low back kicks with forward punches. Now for this move, don't worry about lifting your leg high. We're gonna be working our lower back muscles and our gluteus maximus, okay? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. All right, good job. Okay, we're getting near the end of our workout here. So. Our next move is going to be a sideways curl, okay? With our knee and our arm. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna balance on one leg, bend the knee, put your hand on that hip. Then with your opposite side, you're gonna pull your arm down and your knee up. You wanna make sure you're using your core and your abs. Now, if you can't balance, go ahead and lean on something that's nearby, like a chair or a table, okay? Because we don't want you to fall over. All right, let's do it. One. Two, work it. Three, four, push it. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Now switch sides. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Good job. Okay, walk it up. All right, we're going to start to cool it down. We're almost done. We're going to do some toe taps from side to side with our hands just on our hips. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. Okay. All right, then walk it out real slow. We're gonna cool it down. We're gonna do some cool down breathing just like we did at the beginning. So let's put your feet apart, bend those knees. Inhale up, exhale down, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. All right, good job today, you guys. Well, I hope you had fun today. I hope you got your heart rate up, worked it, burned some calories, and built some muscle today with me. I definitely had fun. Thank you so much for participating and I'm looking forward to seeing you next week. Bye. Wow, Holly, that was such a great fun fitness activity. Whew, I'm kind of tired and a little thirsty. I bet you are too. Let's make sure we grab some water. As I mentioned before, water is like the sixth food group. It's so important. We need to make sure we're drinking some water every single day. Did you know that our bodies, like the earth, is made mostly of water. So we need to make sure we have lots of water to stay hydrated, make sure that all our body is lubricated and has enough water in our cells and our muscles to do everything that you wanna do every day. I encourage you to drink water with every meal and a few times in between as well. If you're thirsty, make sure you think of grabbing water as your first option for a beverage. Okay kids, so let's do a quick recap of the five food groups we learned about today and how they're incorporated in our recipe. We started off with whole grains. So that can be in your crust. You can make a whole grain pizza crust. And then we have protein and fat, which is found in the yummy cheese. You could also add some more protein, like some pepperoni if you wanted as well. We have lots of vegetables on our toppings, so you have that food group covered, as well as some sneaky fruits in there, as we mentioned, with the olives and tomato sauce. Now, if you really wanted to go crazy, you could throw some pineapple on there too. To cut a hot pizza, 
you're gonna wanna use a long knife like this and a large cutting board. If you've got a pizza cutter at home, one of those round ones that rolls, perfect, use that. I don't have one of those here at home and most people don't. So I'm gonna use my knife. To do it safely, I'm gonna put my hand, my left hand over the top of the knife like this and do one cut like that. See, turn it all the way across like that. And you've got a nicely cut pizza. Comes apart. So I hope you enjoyed learning about the five food groups today. Please remember to try to eat as many foods from these five food groups every day to have a well-balanced meal and diet throughout the day. I hope you enjoyed this class from Nourishing Generations. I know I had a great time. Chef Sky, I bet you had a great time too. Thank you so much for this delicious recipe. And kids, there's some handouts included with this class and we're gonna be back for more cooking classes with Nourishing Generations, so I hope you can join us. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you soon.